guess I feel a considerable sympathy for the members of the opposite side who have this extraordinary sense of destabilization at the imminent prospect of peace breaking out. <laughs> the character of their argument, sir, is something which I find regrettable. If I could say very simply that it is my conviction that there is no moral case for nuclear weapons, that the best defence which can be made of their existence and the threat of their use is, as we have heard tonight, that they are a necessary evil and abhorrent means to a desirable end. I hold that the character of nuclear weapons is such that their very existence corrupts the best of intentions, that the means, in fact, perverts the end. And I hold that their character is such that they have brought us to the greatest of all perversions, the belief that this evil is necessary, as it has been stated tonight, when in fact it is not. What I should like to know, sir, is why you don't do the honorable and the consistent thing and pull out of the ANZUS alliance for whether you are snuggling up to the bomb or living in the peaceful shadow of the bomb, New Zealand benefits, sir, and that's the question with which we charge you and that's the question with which we would like an answer, sir. And I'm going to give it to you if you hold your breath, just for a moment. <laughs> I can smell the uranium on it as you lean towards it. <laughs> I want to pass over here the preparations which are constantly being made for the winnable or even survivable nuclear war. I would ignore those and wholeheartedly embrace the logic of the unthinkable war if it could be established that the damage which could result from the collapse of that logic would be confined to nuclear weapon states. Unfortunately and demonstrably it would not. We in New Zealand, you know, used to be able to relax a bit, to be able to think that we would sit comfortably while the rest of the world, seared, singed, withered, were enraptured. It is self-defeating logic, just as the weapons themselves are self-defeating. To compel an ally to accept nuclear weapons against the wishes of that ally is to take the moral position of totalitarianism which allows for no self-determination and which is exactly the evil that we're supposed to be fighting against. We have not given comfort to the Soviet bloc. We have not undermined the West. But the result has been that we have been told by some officials in the United States administration that our decision is not, as they put it, to be cast free. That we are, in fact, to be made to pay for our action. Not by our enemies, but by our friends. We are, in fact, to be made an example of. We are to be ostracized. We are to be convicted of some form of heresy and put on probation. We are going to be kept there until we are compelled to resume our seat in the dress circle of the nuclear theatre. You can't have it both ways. Either you are having a new united Europe marching to glory and to the exclusion of certain primary production from other countries. <laughs> or, or uh, you had it there simply, simply because you had counterpoised this terrible means of destruction. Rejecting the logic of nuclear weapons does not mean surrendering to evil. Evil must still be guarded against. Rejecting nuclear weapons is to assert what is human over the evil nature of the weapon. It is to restore to humanity the power of decision. It is to allow a moral force to reign supreme. It stops the macho lurch into mutual madness. And for me, the position of my country is a genuine, long-term affirmation of this proposition, that nuclear weapons are morally indefensible, and I support that proposition.
a standing ovation from here in the Oxford Union for the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Mr. David Longby.